let's go to the next screen. I want to I want to just mention to you the um, the statement that we have that goes along with our harvest statement. It says reaping every benefit of our relationship with God. How many know that's part of harvest, personal harvest? Reaching out to others with his love and touching nations with his present truth. That's what I believe this house is actually called to do. So on the next screen, I break this down into three different sections. Number one, our personal blessings and influence. That's reaping every benefit of our relationship with God. And I want to say this is that we as believers must actually begin to believe what we believe. And we don't usually find out what we really believe until something happens that shakes our belief system. But I believe part of our foundation in understanding how to reach out to other people in harvest and how to spread our influence is that we've actually got to fully receive the blessings of our salvation and of our walk in the kingdom. We have personally got to be um, people that are fully experiencing that. Let Let me give you this example, okay? So when marketing teams go to have somebody give, a, um, give an, a, an endorsement or a recommendation of their product, the first thing they say is that you need to go home and you need to use the product. And then you can be somebody that recommends it. There's a lot of people that are leaving the church saying Christianity didn't work for me. But the truth of the matter is they never actually used the product. And I think that much of the church world has sold people a false bill of goods when it comes to Christianity. They say things like, come to Jesus and you'll never have any more problems. Is there anybody here that after you came to Jesus, you never had any more problems? Anybody here? Because you probably aren't being truthful and that's probably one of your problems, okay? But what we have to understand is that, is that we need to be fully immersed in the Christian walk. If we get sick, hello, the first thing we ought to do is take communion and ask for the healing of the Lord before we go take a pill. Now, I'm not against taking pills, but understand this. We need to understand that we need to be employing the salvation principles of healing that are found in the atonement before we look to other things. Oh, healing doesn't work for me. Well, have you really used that product? What are some of the benefits of our salvation? Y'all talk to me. Eternal life, freedom, healing, peace, prosperity, joy. What is that? Authority, generational blessings to bless other people. Let me ask you, do we believe what we believe we believe? There is a challenge, I I believe in this church, we're going to constantly challenge you to lay hold of the word of God, to the promises that God has given to us. And listen, all of us are in this growth process, but we've got to press in and we've got to see God's kingdom come, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've got to be the people that say, you know what? If you're sick, Jesus can heal you. Let me tell you why I know Jesus can heal you, because Jesus actually healed me. Jesus can actually set you free from your addiction. You know how I know that? Because I had issues in my life that that were eroding my soul and issues of addiction and, and wrong thinking in my life. And guess what? The Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit set me free. I know if He set me free, He can set you free. See, we've got to be people that are partakers of the actual gospel because then we can actually represent him amen the second aspect of this is that the church needs to be able to be a blessing and bring influence and that's the part where we're talking about harvest of reaching others with his love john 3:16 for god so loved the christians 
<laughs> For God so loved the world. The problem with Christians is that many times we don't love the world. I'm not talking about being worldly. I'm talking about having a passion for lost souls the way that Jesus has a passion for lost souls. Do you realize, <laughs> listen to this, do you realize that Jesus loves atheists, humanists, agnostics? Do you know what I just read this, this week? Harvard University has a atheist as the chaplain of their, of their religious groups. Jesus loves them. Jesus loves worshipers of false God. He, love, he loves Buddhists. He loves I Hindus. He loves Muslims. He loves criminals. He loves people that are living perverted lifestyles. He loves gangbangers. He loves drug addicts. He loves prostitutes. And he knows that if they will give him just a second, he'll turn their lives around. Come on. How many have been saved from an old life? Come on. How many are grateful that you've been saved from that old life? <laughs> Given another chance, we've got to love the world. We were created. Do you know the word church is actually the word ecclesia? You guys know that because we talk about that a lot. Do you know the word ecclesia, though? We, know, we always say it means called out. But it literally means called out of something and moving in to something else. So what we've got to understand is that, yes, we're called out of the world, but we've got to move in to a place of spiritual legislation, authority, and that life of being believers. I want to remind you, we've been praying for the uh, Iranian and Afghanistan churches. Do you realize that at the height of their revival, even a couple of years ago, it was reported on Al Jazeera television, Al Jazeera television, they were talking about the crisis in Islam because they were tracking 16,000 Muslims that were converting to Christianity every single day. You know who is leading them to Christ? Well, let me tell you, they don't have a church. They don't have a bank account. They don't have public gatherings. You know who's winning those people? The believers. Because they believe what they believe they believe. Listening to this Afghani pastor this last week, he said they came to America and they were living in America for a couple of years and he said, I want to go back to Afghanistan where it's dangerous but the church is alive. What an indictment. He said, you know why? He said, because the church in America only makes converts instead of making disciples. A convert takes all the good stuff without the responsibilities of, of propagating the message. And a convert will run away as soon as times get hard. But a disciple is willing to make other disciples, and that disciple is willing to lay down his life for a cause. I am so challenged by what I hear coming out of Afghanistan right now. Amazing, amazing love that God has for the Muslim world. Ed Silvoso says this. He's written a fabulous book called Prayer Evangelism. He says, most of the church is allergic to wheat. They have a wheat allergy. We don't care to associate with the lost, so we hide out in our barns praying for a wind of revival that's strong enough to uproot the wheat and blow it into our barns. <laughs> Come on, we guys. Wheat doesn't jump out of the field into a truck. We got to go get it. Amen.